I remember when I first started filming. <sighs> nervous? Yeah, I am actually. First time? No, I've been nervous lots of times. There was a mistake I was making, I didn't realise at the time, that was not only making my videos boring and all at the same, but my shots just didn't have the desired effect. Gimbal shots, eh? Yeah, cool. Any, anything else? No, no, you, you don't really need anything else when you've got a gimbal, do you? My camera pretty much lives on this thing. Really? Yeah, why? You'll see. Hmm. Using a gimbal for every single shot meant that I could move around and get really smooth footage. Great, but what it also meant was I wasn't thinking about the type of camera movements that I was making. I just orbited around the subject back and forth all the time because the orbit shot was a fail safe, reliable shot, right? But there's more to it than this. I realised I needed to be more intentional with my choice of camera moves if I wanted to stand out from the crowd and be a better visual storyteller. Now all the best film directors know how and why to move the camera in a certain way and there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be doing this either, especially if we want to be become better videographers. So I'm going to show you 7 effective yet easy to remember camera moves and when to use them. I'll also show you which piece of gear is best to use for each technique. By the end of this video you'll have more variety in your shots and you'll be able to connect with your viewers by being clearer in your visual storytelling. Now feel free to ignore these but if you do I guarantee that it'll have the opposite effect and people will become disengaged whilst watching your videos and they won't choose you to film their project. Pedestal is a vertical movement where the camera is raised up or down. Not to be confused with tilt though, because with a pedestal, the entire camera moves rather than just pivoting on an axis. These are usually done with a crane or a jib, but if you don't have one of those lying around, then you could use a slider, a gimbal, or even a drone. Now I recommend a slider to get the smoothest motion, but the problem is a slider has a limited length, so you may not be able to cover enough distance. A gimbal will work fine, but it's difficult to stay at a consistent speed and be stable at the same time. To get higher shots, then you can obviously use a drone. The pedestal shot is used to gradually reveal a character, expressions, locations, or details as the camera moves. With a pushing shot, the camera moves towards or away from the subject. Tracks or dollies are used for this, but you could use a slider, or if you need to travel further, a gimbal will do. Just make sure you walk smoothly to avoid any side to side or up and down movement, because you want this to be as smooth as possible. So using a one wheel or some roller skates would do, just make sure you don't fall off and break all your expensive gear, or your leg. A push-in shot will draw the viewer's focus to the subject, whereas a dolly out or a pull out shot will reveal more of the environment, and these are typically used for an end of a scene or the end of a film. Now I just want to cut in here and say that it's important to think about the speed of the moves, as a faster movement will be more chaotic and attention grabbing, whereas a slower movement will draw the viewer in and create more suspense as they wait for the payoff. A truck shot is where the camera moves from side to side. You can use a slider for the smoothest motion, but again, if you need to travel further, use a track if you have one, or a gimbal. A truck shot is typically used to reveal a subject or multiple subjects. To create depth, you could start from behind an object and then truck to the side to show the environment or the character. A follow shot follows a character through the environment. Now I really like these because there's always new information and plenty to look at as you move through the scenery. Now the best equipment to use for this is a gimbal or a steady cam as they allow you to move freely and achieve one shot takes like in the film 1917 or the classic intro to the Halloween movie. There are a few variations to this shot. A leading shot where the camera is in front of the subject, a parallel follow which follows the subject from the side and a bird's eye follow or top shot with a drone from above. You could do all these handheld but it will create a more hectic less stable shot great for fast moving high impact stuff like sports or fight scenes an orbit shot is a circling motion around the subject. Gimbals or steady cams are great for this, but drones can be used too. An orbit shot shows the character in the environment, but the distance can change the effect dramatically. So a wide shot shows more of the surroundings, while being close to the subject focuses on the character and the emotions. A dolly zoom is where the camera moves backwards or forwards while zooming in or out in the opposite direction at the same time. This changes the relationship between the subject and the background and distorts the image, which looks unusual and creates intrigue and suspense like there's something wrong. Now I don't have a digital zoom button on my lens, so I got this shot by hooking up my focus motor to my zoom ring using these little geared teeth, which I'll leave a link in the description for, and then I just use the focus wheel on the gimbal. Now you could do this by hand with the lens barrel, but it's difficult to keep the camera level and smooth whilst moving. No, 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 no. 
Rack focusing is where you change the focus of the lens from one subject to another. This works best with a shallow depth of field and more distance between the two points of focus so that there's more of a distinct difference between what's in focus and what's out of focus. Right, I know what you're thinking. This isn't a camera move, but is it? If you think about it, what a camera move does is moves from one point of interest to the other. And when you change focus, you're shifting the viewer's attention from one thing to another. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a move or not? Okay, so I know I said seven camera moves, but I just want to give you a couple of bonus things to think about. For even more interest and variety, you could add pan and tilt movements to any of the moves that we've looked at so far. Now, I love a pushing shot coupled with a tilt upwards to reveal things like mountains when you're using a drone. Now, you want to be creative with this, but remember, it's about what you need to show the viewer, not how fancy the movement is. Story first. To get the smoothest movements when panning and tilting, I recommend a tripod with a fluid head. I I use this one from Manfrotto because it's got what's called a fluid drag system on the pan and the tilt axis. But you can also change the speed, so if I want to go a little bit quicker, but it's still nice and smooth, and that's the same on both. It's such a good tripod. Ooh. Then there's the static shot, which isn't a camera move at all, but this allows the acting or the movements of the characters to take the lead. And this means the viewer can make up their own mind about how they feel about what's happening on screen. Practicing what you've learned in this video will certainly improve your visual storytelling skills, but if you pair it with the techniques within this video, then I guarantee that your videos will look even more impressive. 